Today's topic, well, actually, the topic for this video and the next several videos is Graham versus Connor, the Supreme Court case that provides a foundation for evaluating police use of force incidents. I'm Steve Serbalik, and I'm a panel attorney with ASCOPS in Arizona. This week's video will serve as a topic introduction for Graham versus Connor, and I'll dive into specific elements of this case over the next several weeks. So today, I'll cover the background behind Graham versus Connor, the three categories involved in a classic Graham versus Connor analysis, and why this case matters for police officers. Then, in the next several videos, I'll discuss specific things for you to keep in mind as it relates to each of the prongs of a Graham versus Connor analysis, as well as an overview of the concept of objective reasonableness. As always, please keep in mind that this is a general topic overview, not legal advice. So if you have questions about a specific incident, ask for help. So first, let's talk about the background behind Graham versus Connor. It's a 1989 Supreme Court case that involved an incident where police officers in North Carolina saw a man, Mr. Graham, acting suspiciously. Officers thought that he might be drunk, but it turns out the man was experiencing a diabetic emergency. Mr. Graham was non-compliant, and the officers ended up using force to detain Mr. Graham, resulting in him sustaining a broken foot, among other injuries. Lower courts threw out Mr. Graham's lawsuit, in part because they determined that the officer's force was applied in a good faith effort to maintain discipline, not maliciously and sadistically for the purpose of causing harm. In other words, the lower courts evaluated the subjective intent of the involved officers. This brings us to the heart of the Graham versus Connor ruling. The Supreme Court reversed the lower court's determination that the subjective intent of the officers was relevant, and instead, the court held that courts must determine if an officer's conduct was objectively reasonable, and said that some of the main factors to be considered in evaluating police use of force cases are the severity of the crime at issue, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of the officers or others, and whether the suspect is actively resisting arrest or attempting to flee from being arrested. So now that you know the Graham versus Connor factors to be considered, here's why this case matters for you. Whether or not an officer has a bad intent, Graham versus Connor holds that the officer's conduct must be objectively reasonable, and that the reasonableness of an officer's action is judged by the totality of the circumstances. So it's what an officer does not what his or her intentions were, that dictates whether or not the use of force was justified. The court also held that the reasonableness of a use of force must be judged from the perspective of a reasonable officer on the scene, rather than with the 2020 vision of hindsight. Reasonableness allows for the fact that police officers are often forced to make split-second judgments about the amount of force that's necessary in a particular situation, in circumstances that are tense, uncertain, and rapidly evolving. In the next several videos, I'll go into more detail about the different levels of force, each of the three Graham factors, some additional factors that other courts have considered, and what the objective reasonableness standard means, particularly as it relates to body cameras and video evidence. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button below and subscribe for more law enforcement lessons. In particular, Check out the next week's video on the levels of force and how best to articulate how the force used was appropriate. I'm Steve Serbalik. Thanks for watching and stay safe out there.